where do you think the disconnect then becomes? Is it because going back to the Rivian and the Tesla thing, uh, what, what they've both, I believe Rivian's done this for everything is they've also kind of gone away from the dealership and done more of a direct to uh, purchaser conversation. And same with Tesla, whereas Ford, GM are kind of locked into these existing dealership contracts. What kind of education or things in place? I mean, you alluded to a little bit earlier with the used car stuff, but do you think that's going to be kind of the biggest hindrance for a while? Or is there just eventually a way that they can kind of get around that for getting that in front of consumers? I refuse to accept the franchise dealer model as an excuse to deliver shitty service. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, GM has, look, a lot of stuff that Tesla has done was originated with with folks like Saturn. So there is nothing about what Tesla does from a retail perspective that others couldn't do. And I I mean, I hear this a lot. It's a conversation I keep pushing back on because from the any franchise automakers, what we hear a lot is, well, we can't control what our franchises do. I'm like, yeah, that's so hard. And at the same time, the OEMs are the ones that write all the training, including the ones for plug-in hybrids that don't mention the plug and that used to take three days but now take two hours and are only online and the qualities decline quite a bit and all of the research into these things shows remarkably that that which salespeople are not comfortable with they will not sell very well right it's a shock (laughs) and that which they have never really experienced they're not going to be very comfortable selling and on and on so tesla's secret sauce for from the retail sales perspective is really well-trained salespeople who are passionate about their product in a low pressure sales environment. That's kind of it. There's nothing else about the fact that Elon signs the checks that means that anyone else couldn't replicate that. And there are some individual franchise dealers of different brands and sometimes conglomerates of dealers that do some of those things, whether it's single pricing, no haggle, low pressure, good training, like all of those things can be replicated. And so therefore, there's nothing about the traditional automakers and their franchise system that I accept precludes them from providing a better experience than they do today. Well, and one of the things, I completely agree, one of the things that really, uh, I forget how long ago I learned this, and it totally makes sense, but years ago when I realized this is actually kind of an American problem, like in a lot of other countries, dealer or manufacturers sell direct. And yes and no. I, I think mean, it de- I think it depends on their brand a bit. Um, I, I believe that's kind of the case with Ford, where they do have more of a dealership model globally. But like Daimler uh, or Mercedes, in a lot of countries, just sells direct, or they have their own uh, essentially employees who are selling it in Europe. Right. Um, yeah, we're, I don't know. I, I've just found that always kind of interesting. I mean, and I, I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, there's still the distributorship system and I and that plays out differently around the world. Um, in Norway, for example, it's not it's very much distributorship. There is no native car building there, no native. Yeah. <laughs> but the way one of the keys to their success, all the incentives get all the focus. But an interesting thing that happened there is that the the EV Association struck a deal with all of the franchise auto manuf- or the dealers and basically made the dealers pay them 25 bucks for every EV they sold. And therefore now every EV comes with a new driver car kit on the passenger seat when you buy a new EV. It's got the fob that works with all the chargers. It's got the FAQ thing. It's got the, a year long membership to a nine to five Monday through Friday office to answer all of the newbie questions. It's got a bunch of things that provide value to the new driver. It takes a bunch of weight off the dealers, which is why I love it. They're like, sure, 25 bucks, here you go. <laughs> we'll yeah. do that. And it helps the driver association, A, go forward, but provide the more valuable service to the drivers. And so even in those types of scenarios, it's not that it's not native franchise versus distributor or whatever else. It's that they still had to come up with a solution. In New Zealand, it's a similar model, distributorship, and some of the normal brand dealers sell some cars, but there it's a 70, 75% used car market imports and used, lightly used, 
import dealers have cropped up around EVs, and there's a small handful of very well-known ones that provide spectacular service of the types we would recommend <laughs> that do those sorts of things and therefore have become known for that and have created their own brands around it. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to visit our website, connectingthegrid.com. There you can listen to our podcasts, contact us about sponsorship, or even be a guest on Grid Connections. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a positive rating on your favorite podcast or video streaming service. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out a lot too. Thank you again, and I look forward to us learning more together soon.